What's up, YouTube? Welcome to Geo Aquariums. My name is Nate. This morning I woke up to something super cool that I want to share with y'all, so go ahead and come along for the ride and check this out. You crazy mother... All right, so before we get started in on this, and before I, I show you what I got going on over there, I just want to lay out the story for you, right, so you can really picture this. Um, I haven't been trying to breed plecos for a while. Moving and everything was crazy. Like, I was trying to downsize, sold most of my stuff, sold most of my tanks. So finally, I was like, you know what? I want to dial it back up. I want to give it a try. Let's see if I can get them to go again, right? So my slate rocks weren't really working. I turned the temperature up to around like 78. I started feeding green beans heavy. To be honest with you, I didn't give it that much time. I gave it maybe two weeks. I hadn't really seen any breeding activity. I thought maybe my plecos were too young yet. Um, I sold off most of my big ones, my big pears and stuff like that. And was just giving it time. So I decided to try these breeding caves, right? These um, watering stakes off Amazon that they're all the rave and whatnot. I got them Thursday night, all right? I put them in the tanks Thursday night. It is now Saturday morning and check this out, all right? Here we go, flip you around. Right there. We have uh, Albino Bristanoa's Pleco Spawn. Odin. Dude always has to be the center of attention. Licking the camera. But this little male down here, and he's already fanning and all. I think he's still thinking there's Pleco eggs in there. But this little dude down here was sitting on a big old batch inside his new cave. So I just bought four of them, figured I'd give him a try. Um, I'm going to be getting some green dragon bristle nose here maybe today or in the next couple of weeks. I'm going to be putting it in this tank and I think I'm going to split two caves and two caves and see what we can do. So my idea for these plecos, um, Jeff Rose Fishkeeping, if you're watching this, this is where I got this idea. I've never seen anybody raise these artificially before. I've never done artificial. I would just let them sit on them. Um, sometimes they've eaten them and stuff like that, and it's just kind of one of those things you have to gamble with. But they typically breed so frequently that it wasn't a problem. They figured it out pretty quick for me. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to keep track of these eggs. I'm going to give you this image from now until they turn into wigglers and when they turn into free swimming and so on. And kind of give you a time lapse since this is literally, they were laid last night. So go ahead and stick along in this video, and I'm going to kind of check in every couple days and give you an update. All right, a little bit of an update. So they were born on Saturday the 29th. It is now the 1st. So it's been like three, four days. And some of the things I've learned from taking them out for the first time. So we can get this to focus nice. So you can kind of see some of them have like uh, the fungi, like they're fungus up, they're not good. And then there's other ones that most of them have like the red line, right? Like there's a, a vein starting or something like that. So I'm thinking there should be good to go. It looks like little silhouettes of little baby fish. You can kind of see them there. Some I've learned though, these things collect all the detritus that is floating around in the tank. It is so hard to keep these eggs clean using this breeder box. So I think you'd have to soup it up a little bit in order to try to filter that out before it gets into this little tank. Um, I don't think it's affected them too heavily, but you can definitely see there's a lot of poop stuck to these things. And I try to flush it out and clean it up frequently, but it's tough to stay on top of. And then also snails crawl inside this thing. So keeping them out of here uh, has been tough, but we'll keep on going. Another little close up here. Here we go. So just real quick, this is a macro shot, so you can kind of see where the blood vessels are that I was talking about before. So again, it's been about three, four days, and I will continue this in a couple of days. All right, y'all, so here's an update. It's now day five. There are wigglers. There are wigglers yesterday, but not all of them had came out. So I took them out of this box and I put them in a net and put them over top of the sponge filter because I thought I had better um, aeration and then they didn't have all the poop and stuff that was floating in that little container. So I left them in the net all day yesterday. I didn't really want to mess with them. 
But today it looks like they're all out of their shells pretty much. Um, all, all hatched out, all wiggling. So I thought that this would be a good time to move them into this container. And if it builds up any mulm or anything like that, um, hopefully they'll be able to start feeding on that as soon as uh, the eggs are, or their yolk sac is gone. So I thought this was a pretty cool shot. You can see their heartbeats beating. They're wiggling away. It's pretty freaking awesome using this macro lens. But like I said, this is day five. They were born on the 29th of December, and it is now the 3rd of January. So I'll check back in in a few days. All right, y'all, so just a real quick update. It is now the 5th of January. So we're going on, I think, a week. You can see the egg sac has gotten much smaller. And just a note, since I'm keeping log here, this little filter thing up here on top, oh, oh, let me see, coordination. This little guy right there, I'm taking this thing out. If they overflow and they go into the tank, that's perfectly fine. I have this tank, I just built this new rack, got this tank all set up for them, so that way this will be their little home. Um, but as you can see, I got one lying there motionless. Got a little guy got stuck up there in that, and I'm pretty sure it killed him, so it really bums me out. It's not what I want. So I decided I'm going to remove that, and if they overflow and they fall into the tank, then so be it. They should be free swimmers here pretty soon. So I don't know, this might be the last update with them in this cool little box right here. But I will still keep you updated. I'll let you know when the yolk sacs are completely gone and we got a bunch of free swimming baby plecos. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned. All right, y'all, it is now January 7th. It's been about 10 days. And you can see the yolk sac is mostly gone. They're mostly developed. You can kind of see their gills in there. Their heartbeats are pumping away. It looks like their intestinal tract is really starting to develop and turn into something in there. I don't think we're too far away from having some straight up fry. No more wigglers. You can see that guy. He's still alive and he's wiggling that, that egg off to the right, but there's something wrong with him. I think he's going to die here in the next couple days. Uh, the rest of them though are pretty much developed. Right now you're on a macro shot getting a sweet picture of this heartbeat, but I'll pull off the macro lens and then show you where the rest of them are and what they look like. All right, so here we go. Now you can see the rest of them. There's quite a few in there. I'd probably say somewhere in the 20 to 30 range. We got a bunch left in the actual breeder box itself, but I took the overflow off because they were getting crunched up in there. And then you can see in the tank, there's a whole bunch in this corner, if we can get it to focus. A whole bunch in this focus, or in the corner, as well as swimming around the tank. So I'll keep this updated with you. Here's your quick January 7th update, and I'll let you know when they're free swimming. All right, y'all, it's January 10th, and they are fully developed. That the focus, fully developed, all of them are swimming around. There's a bunch more up here at the top of the tank. Here's another one. This one for sure doesn't have any yolk sac left. They're pretty much fully developed. Ready to rock. Swimming around, eating on the wood, eating up the mulm on the bottom of this tank. They're all over the place here. I think they're somewhere around 30. Right now they're doing a real good job of hiding. You can kind of see them all over the place down underneath here. They're doing really well. So it's January 10th. They were born on the 29th, so they went from an egg to free swimming fry with no egg sac in like 13 days. Stay tuned for a wrap up and I uh, give you everything that I've learned over the course of this project. All right, y'all, so the project is done. Uh, I just wanna go over the things that I learned while doing this project. This is the first time I ever pulled the Pleco eggs and raised them in a breeder box. So number one, if you're going to use this and use a breeder box, I highly suggest getting some sort of uh, like low density foam with the big pores. I used to make uh, matten filters on 10 gallons for my shrimp tanks. No longer do it, I wasn't a big fan of them. They do work well, but I, uh, this wasn't for me, it was that they were hard to clean, what not? Different subject, take foam like that. And in the overflow on these breeder boxes, typically there's like a graded clear plastic that goes up in here where the water flows out and over. Um, I put a piece of foam there. I ended up losing, I wanna say one or two fry because they got wedged in there, which was really, really unfortunate. It bums me out because it's completely preventable. 
So putting a piece of foam in the overflow for the water to flow over make a huge difference. And then throughout the video, you can see how completely disgusting it got inside that breeder box. Okay. Using a little piece of foam on this intake tube, hopefully you can see that intake tube that runs up and through the tank here into the breeder box using that air lift system. Putting a piece of foam in there has kept these things completely clean. So I've been running them now. I guess they're not completely clean, but much cleaner than what they were. There's not as much stuff swirling in there but it's made a huge difference. It's nowhere near as nasty as what it was and now these have been running for quite a few days since I've modified this system. Um, how, or so pretty much like, now I wanna cover like my water parameters, right? Uh, I've ran them pretty much consistently at 75 degrees. Um, water's relatively hard. GH up around like nine, 10 area. Uh, parts per million are on the 200 parts per million range. Um, but pretty much just kept them high flow. I didn't even have like an air sewn in here when I had them in the in the smaller breeder box on the other end. Um, I found that there was enough circulation just with the airlift tube. But running them about 75 degrees, it took just under two weeks, about 13 days, for them to go from itty bitty babies to pre swimming fry. So. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this as interesting as I did. The macro shots and the hearts pumping the blood was like the raddest thing ever. I was so stoked that day. I sat in my fish room for hours just watching them through my camera because I thought it was so cool. So hopefully you appreciated that at least a little bit because I loved it. Um, until next time, thank you all for watching. Like and subscribe and mean a lot to me. And let me know if anything in the comments you want to see or curious about on this project or want to see more of. Um, I'd be glad to oblige. So thank you so much and y'all have a great day.